Hi everyone, my name is Marissa Frazier and I made this video to try to help out some of my fellow upper grade writing teachers. I know there's been a lot of questions about how to do um, writing drafts with the whole computer, virtual, hybrid, different models that are going on. So I just wanted to share how we decided to do it in case it would help any of you. So if you're using Google Classroom and Google Docs, then this could be a potential way for you to do it. So our kids did their generating of ideas and seed ideas in their notebooks. And then to take their seed idea into a draft outside of the notebook, we chose to use Google Docs as a way um, because then we could see their progress each day by looking at the edit history and we could see what exactly they revised and what they changed. So here's how we did it. We started with a document that we made as a template Yours could be really simple. It could just say like small moment draft at the top or, you know, personal narrative draft at the top. Um, it doesn't have to have all this. We added the picture that we used in the lesson of the writing process just to remind them of what we were really doing and what we would be working towards and to help reiterate the fact that they would be working on this same document throughout all of these parts of the process. So... We made this one template document. We demonstrated for the students in the drafting lesson how to click on the draft to start typing and what that would look like. One of our teachers modeled their story idea in a video that we shared with the students. But this was just our template and we then made one for every student. So we just went to file, make a copy, at the beginning here, we just took off the part where it said student's name and copy of and just typed the student's name. So I'll just use my name here, Marissa's small moment story, hit OK. And now there's a copy of that template for me. We did this for every student in our class. So this is the part that takes a little bit um, because depending on how many kids you have, this part is a little tedious. But if they're going to be working on the same document for many days, then it's worth it to have it set up in a way where they can easily get back to it each day. So we found that this work on the front side was worth it. So once you've done that copying the template for each student in your class, you will then see that you, I, I put them all into one folder. Um, this is just a test version, so it doesn't have all my kids in it, but you will see that all the drafts are here. You click on that student's draft and go to the share button and that's where you will add them as an editor. So this is the part that's really important. You type in their email or their username and then you add them as an editor. You want to make sure that next to their name it says editor, not viewer. If it says viewer, they will not be able to edit. They will only be able to view. So you want to make sure that it has you as the owner and them as the editor. Once you've done that for each student in your class, then they will have a document set up that they can edit in a folder. What you need to do next is copy the link to the folder. So I go up to the top here where the folder name is, I use the drop down arrow, I click on get link, and then I go over to Google Classroom and I hit create and I'm going to create a material. I'm creating it as a material so that they can't turn it in. That will make the ownership issues a little easier. I'm gonna just call it personal narrative drafts. I could add a little description if I wanted to. Click add link and then I paste the link that I just copied for the folder. I'm doing the folder so that all the students can use the same link to get to their document without me having to post the link to every single kid's document. Um, that would get it really tedious. Um, it's already tedious enough to create the documents, but I wanted this side to be pretty simple. And I think from third grade on, they should be able to click on a folder and find their draft. It seems to work pretty well. I put it under today's work. I can post this for all my students because all their drafts are in that same folder. Now under today's work, they have their materials post that has their folder to their draft. To get to it, they just click on that link. And then once the folder opens up, 
they will double click on their name to open their copy of the draft. They won't be able to edit anybody else's because I only added them as an editor on their own draft. So that is what they're working on. If they turn that in, that creates those ownership issues. So on their assignment for this day, I had their mini lesson from the virtual units available to them when they were working on their draft. So when they finished working on their draft for that day, following what the lesson was or what we were working on for revising, then they would turn in this assignment, but their drafts remain available to them and they can continue to edit their drafts at any time. So this was the simplest way that we could find so that students could easily find their draft again. It wasn't linked to one particular assignment and then you had to figure out a way to get it to a new assignment and um, you didn't have those ownership issues from kids turning it in. So hopefully this was helpful and if you have any questions just reach out let me know um, and I'm happy to help if I can. Good luck!